Hello, this is Eric de Carbonell from MarketSkeptics.com. This video is about something I've been afraid to blog about, the Treasury Department's Exchange Stabilization Fund and its history. The ESF is a super-secret Treasury operation and is the official channel for the Treasury's gold and foreign currency dealings. This means covert operations. The ESF is also virtually free of congressional control and has been used to pay a number of strange activities. It is the largest, most powerful financial agency in the world. Trust me, this won't be boring. Let's begin by reviewing the basics. First, the Exchange Stabilization Fund has been around a long while. It was created by the Gold Reserve Act of 1934 to protect the value of the dollar. And it does this by buying and selling foreign currency. For example, when the U.S. buys $1 billion in March intervention, it is the work of the Treasury's ESF. So the outcome of the inflation versus deflation debate that's been raging over the last few years really depends on this agency that most people have never even heard of. Number two, ESF operations are conducted through the New York Fed. This means that the New York Fed executes the actual trading, handles the back office documentation, etc. on the ESF's behalf. Basically, the ESF operates from within and controls the New York Fed. Let me give you an example to illustrate this important point. Here's a Wall Street Journal article from 1962. It shows how the New York Fed has been striving to stabilize the dollar as agent for the Exchange Stabilization Fund. In other words, a large part of the New York Fed staff work for the ESF defending the dollar. The New York Fed essentially is the ESF. So when the New York Fed lends $85 billion to AIG, and when New York Fed staff lament the inability to keep Congress in the dark about the details of that bailout, that is the ESF at work. Number three, the Treasury's ESF controls international finance. What most people don't realize is that the Secretary of the Treasury is the chief international monetary policy official of the United States, and the ESF helps carry out these responsibilities. What this means is the Fed takes directions from the Treasury Department on international monetary affairs. So in the international arena, the Fed's independence is limited. The Treasury controls international finance. And the Fed does what it's told to do. Chairman Martin, the Fed's longest-serving chairman, confirms that anything done by the Federal Reserve must be coordinated with the Treasury through the Stabilization Fund. The absolutely key point here is that on any international matter, like establishing currency swaps with foreign central banks, bailing out international companies like AIG, and interventions in the currency market, the Treasury is in charge. To understand how important this is, think back to 2008 when McCain enjoyed a five-point lead over Obama in the polls, and then the New York Fed let Lehman Brothers fail which almost took down the entire financial system. The market crashed and overnight the national dialogue turned almost entirely onto the economy. Obama's polling jumped, McCain dropped and never recovered. After the collapse in the fall of 2008, there was nothing the McCain campaign could do to win that election. The ESF's decision to let Lehman Brothers fail gave Obama the presidency. Number four, the ESF keeps a low profile using the Fed as a front. It's not an accident that most people have never heard of the Exchange Stabilization Fund. The ESF is a slush fund that likes to operate in extreme secrecy. The ESF keeps a low profile by letting the Fed speak on its behalf and using the New York Fed to act on its behalf. The ESF also uses the phrase U.S. Monetary Authorities to keep its name out of the news. Of course, U.S. Monetary Authorities means the Federal Reserve and the ESF. So what happens is the Federal Reserve ends up with all the credit and the blame, and the ESF continues operating without anyone knowing it exists. One of the many reasons the ESF keeps a low profile is the fact that it's done a terrible job. Since the ESF was put in charge of defending the dollar's value, the greenback has been on a one-way track to worthlessness. Notice that for the period of time that the Federal Reserve was in charge of defending the dollar, it did its job. The dollar kept its value right up to the Gold Reserve Act of 1934, when all the Fed's powers were transferred to the Treasury's ESF. Hijacking the Fed To understand how the Treasury took control of the Federal Reserve, we need to look at the congressional hearings held in 1934. The Gold Reserve Act was the most important bill to come before Congress since the Civil War. 
because it destroyed America's central bank. It fundamentally shifted responsibility from the Federal Reserve System to the Treasury in the only matters in which the control of the currency and credit really matter. Even before this bill, the Secretary of the Treasury was practically dominating the Fed. The Gold Reserve Act gave the Treasury the means to completely control the Federal Reserve. It gave the Secretary of the Treasury such powers of a permanent nature that he could nullify anything the Federal Reserve did. It nullified, if not scrapped, the Federal Reserve System. If you take away all the Fed's powers and gold, where will the Federal Reserve System stand? It utterly emasculated the fundamental idea of the Federal Reserve Banking System. These quotes are not exaggerated. Here's a graph of short-term interest rates over the last 50 years. Now, the Federal Reserve supposedly sets short-term interest rates, right? Well, I've color-coded this graph with all the Secretary of the Treasuries for this time period, and it produces some interesting patterns. Notice how visibly the changes in Secretary of the Treasury affect interest rates, especially the trend in interest rates. Up, down, up, up, down, steady, down, up, Steady, up, down, up, down. The Fed's independence is a myth. The Treasury has dominated the Federal Reserve through the ESF. Today, the Federal Reserve is a mere shadow of itself, a mechanism functioning as a clearing agency which has no control over anything important. Taking control of America's gold. Even the question of where the ESF got all its money is embarrassing. After confiscating all the gold in America, the Treasury devalued the dollar, creating a huge capital gain. This profit became the war chest of the Treasury, the Exchange Stabilization Fund. This visual history of the Fed shows how gold holdings were forbidden, then gold was revalued, and the profits put into the Exchange Stabilization Fund. A key point here is that the Treasury's ESF, through confiscation, took control of three quarters of the world's monetary gold. The ESF was a guaranteed disaster, and people knew it back in 1934. Transferring all this power to a Secretary of the Treasury who has never had any banking experience, and giving the biggest borrower in the world the ability to inflate its debts away, is not smart. If this bill goes through this way, not even the president can control the ensuing inflation. If the stabilization fund should fail, we might be drifting towards a period of extreme inflation. While putting the treasury in control of monetary policy was bad enough, even worse was the way the ESF was set up. Dictatorial power and no oversight. Section 10 of the Gold Reserve Act states that the sum of $2 billion will be deposited in the ESF under the exclusive control of the Secretary of the Treasury, whose decisions shall be final and not subject to review by any other officer of the United States. Handing that much money to one man is something that should have kept people up at night. The man does not live, never has lived, and never will live who has the ability to single-handedly manage so large a fund. Furthermore, there was no limit to what the Secretary of the Treasury could do with that money. The bill's wording gave the Treasury unlimited authority to deal in almost anything. Worse still, because the ESF was conceived to operate in secret, Congress decided to never look at what it was doing. Since its creation in 1934, the ESF has operated with no congressional oversight whatsoever. Secrecy about what the government does with people's money is never healthy. The Gold Reserve Act centered in the hands of the Secretary of the Treasury dictatorial powers. Far too much power to place in the hands of one man. And, as my great-grandfather Frank Vandalip states, the Secretary of the Treasury would have a lot of things to do, and power to do them that a banker would not.